My name is uh, Matthew Budoff. I'm a professor of medicine at uh, the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, and I'm uh, the, the principal investigator at the Lundquist Institute in Torrance, California. Yeah, so we know that uh, atherosclerosis or plaque in the coronary arteries is associated with plaque rupture and future heart attacks and strokes. So when the Reduce It trial showed a 25% reduction in heart attack and stroke and cardiovascular death using icosa pentethyl, we wanted to investigate why or by what mechanism icosa pentethyl may benefit patients. So we undertook the evaporate trial. Yes, yeah, so there's been a number of, of studies trying to look at the overall benefits of this therapy. And I do think that um, we've been able to demonstrate that it has some anti-inflammatory property and antioxidant property, but that really doesn't explain the robust benefits that we saw. Interestingly, while we use icosapentethyl for, triglycer for patients with high triglycerides, its effect on triglyceride lowering is not the full explanation. So it's not just lowering triglycerides and lowering events. So I think now through Evaporate, we've been able to show at 18 months that patients have less plaque and that there's some atherosclerosis regression or slowing of progression that is gonna be one of the mechanisms of benefit for these patients. Yeah, so um, certainly, uh, you know, this was uh, considered a relatively small study with only 80 patients. Um, we did hit all of our endpoints at the end of 18 months, so that was good. And we'll have a simultaneous publication coming out with more details in the European Heart Journal as the study's being presented. So hopefully patient, people can get a little more information about the final results. But I, but I agree with you, we need larger studies, and we are starting a larger trial now. Um, um, to look at uh, plaque changes over time. And hopefully that'll provide us both uh, kind of confirmation of the first study, as well as a, a larger study to look at some of the subgroups, uh, men versus women, diabetics versus non-diabetics, to try to figure out exactly who benefits the most and, and, and how big the benefit really is.